Shataya Mandiri Asujahate. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. Right, I don't want to take too much of your time. In the next two minutes, we're going to start. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity that you have given yet to us yet again, Lord. To minister your word, Lord. To rightly divide your word of truth, Lord. Father, I declare and I decree that everybody that will be under the sound of my voice, their lives can never remain the same. It is through your word that lives are transformed. It is through your word, Lord, that lives are changed from glory to glory. We thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, take over. Take authority in everything that I shall do, everything that I shall say. Let your name be exalted, Lord. I decrease that you increase. I disappear that you appear. Father, we declare and we decree that we are what the word says we are. We have what the word says we have. And we can do what the word says we can do. Father, in this day, Lord, help us to come to the place of knowledge as we rightly divide your word of truth, Lord, without compromise. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. I bless your holy name. Let your name be exalted. Oh, glory to God. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Take over now. Take authority in Jesus mighty name father we pray hallelujah glory to god glory to god ali basu gradia suja ah paida it is good to see you god bless you gail it is good to see you god bless you maha badsha is good to see you god bless you oh glory to god florence kings it is good to see you god bless you praise god in the next minute we are going to start i don't want to keep you for long uh apostle tembo it is good to see you say i i honor you i just pray that god will continue to elevate you god may god continue to expand your territory in the name of jesus i declare over your life may destiny help us locate you in the name of jesus may your destiny help us locate you in jesus mighty name glory to god father i thank you uh maha Batsha, is it but uh Batsha. god bless you god bless you maha god bless you god bless you thank you for joining in just kindly share the broadcast just let somebody know that we are live and life is flowing through the airwaves glory to god like i said i don't want to take too much of your time let's just get straight into it and i truly believe that your lives will never remain the same Praise God. Praise God. I'm so excited. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Listen, the best thing that any man or woman can ever do for you is to give you knowledge. That's the best thing anyone can ever do for you is to give you knowledge. We started off a series called uh, The Mirror. And the question that I would pose again is, what is it that you're seeing in the mirror? Praise God. What is it that you are seeing in the mirror? I'm excited. Today I'm going to be teaching, preaching, ministering, uh, everything. We are going to be doing everything today. Glory to God. So just get ready. I might just turn on you and I might just give you a word of, uh, a word of knowledge. Praise God. So just let somebody know that we are alive. Just take a friend, take a sister, take a brother. Let them know that we are alive. Praise God. Right, let's just quickly jump straight into it. Like I said, I don't want to take too much of your time. Glory to God. I'm excited. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 4. Praise God. I don't want to take too much of your time. We want to get straight into it. Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter number 4. Verse 11. 
Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 11 para dia suja. The Bible declares and says, glory to God. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers, before we get any further, I want you to understand something, that there was no church up until his ascension. So it was upon his ascension that he gave gifts. He gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be pastors, some to be shepherds, teachers, because there was no church. But the church became church after his ascension. Then he gave some to be Apostles, teachers, shepherds, prophets. Why did he do that? Verse number 12. To equip the saints for the work of ministry. For building up the body of Christ. Until we attain. Until we attain. So the essence of the prophets, the pastors, the preachers, the teachers, the shepherds. The essence of them is to what? Is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. For building up the body of Christ until, until we attain to the unity of faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God. I've told you that the unity of faith is not Roman Catholic, Anglican, Methodist, Pentecostal coming together. That is not the unity of faith. The unity of faith is believing the message of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Coming to the knowledge of truth. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that is not ashamed of the gospel, rightly dividing the word of truth. So coming to the faith, the unity of the faith is coming to the knowledge of him. It is not churches coming together. That is not the unity of faith. Look at it again. And it says, coming to the unity until we attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of God. Why? To mature manhood to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be tossed to and fro by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. Remember, it's not, it's not a doctrine, it's a wind. That means a wind will just come and blow. It's not uh, stable. A wind will just blow anyhow. So it says, so that you won't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Right, I want you to understand something. The essence of preaching, the essence of us teaching the word of God is that we may equip you, is the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. It's the equipping of the saints. So the role of the apostles, the role of the prophets, the role of the shepherds, the teachers, the evangelist is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So it is not the church or the congregants that determine what the preacher preaches. Why am I saying this? Because many preachers now, they preach something to do with what people are going through. They preach according to people's problems. So it's more like the message that is being preached nowadays is custom made based on the problems that you are going through. They preach according to that. Oh, glory to God. They pre preach according to that message, according to the problems that you are going through. But that is not the essence of the ministry of the word. That is not the message. That is not the essence of the preaching. It is not to custom, custom made or tailor made messages you hear somebody everything that because uh, you're going through a certain challenge in life so the message is custom made for you because you're going through this and then this this is why you end up finding people in a situation whereby the message that is always being preached is about your enemies your enemies your enemies the witches the witches the witches but the question i want to ask you i just want to pose this question is with the type of message that your, your preachers are preaching, can that same message be preached in Qatar? Can that same message be preached in, the, in Europe? Can that message be preached in the Americas? Why am I asking that question? Because if that message it cannot be preached in another city that is not Africa or that is not wherever that is being preached from, then automatically that has been custom made because the message of the cross ought to be universal. That means the message that I preach, it does not matter whether you are tall, you are... You are you're rich, you're poor, you're what? That message, the common denominator that we have is sin. That Christ came that he may rectify that. 
He died for that. So the message is not about you will get it, you will make it, you will know. That's not the message. That's not the essence. The Bible is saying the role of the prophets, the apostles, the teachers is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So the question I will pose again is the sort of message that you are preaching that uh, I'm not, my business is not doing well. And then you are told that um, it's your uncle that is sitting on your business. I would ask that same question again. Would you say the same thing to somebody that is in Europe or in America or in Canada or in Qatar that your business is not working? They will turn around and say, excuse me, my business is not working because I've not been doing my marketing properly. But when it when when it comes to it being custom made it it brings you into a place whereby um fear has been instilled in you that you are feeling like your things are not working because there's somebody that is sitting on on your progress there's somebody that is sitting on this so that message that's why you find many people that have made it that are wealthy they don't even want to hear your gospel because they feel like the gospel is for those that are poor but that is wrong mindset because the gospel is for everybody because that is the will of God. What is the will of God? When you look in the Bible, in the book of Timothy, it says, for it is the will of God that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So why am I bringing this? So that you understand where I'm coming from. The foundation has to be set right. Are you here with me? I'm laying a foundation here. So the message that I preach, it has to be universal. Even in Canada, they will hear that message. Even in Europe, they will hear that message. Even in Germany, they will hear. In South Africa, they will hear that message. It shouldn't be custom made. That's why you end up finding your aunt is this, your aunt is this. And you will ask somebody, listen, Okay, your business is not progressing. What is it that you are trying to do? They will turn around. I have, I have got no problem. I have got the anointing from Papa. It don't work like that here. In the marketplace, it don't work like that. You got to do your research, do diligence. You got you to gotta be out there grinding. You got to be doing this. So the essence of the message is not that come to church, your problems will end. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Why am I saying it's a lie from the pit of hell? Because when you come to Christ, you are the righteousness of God. And the Bible declares that for many are the afflictions of the righteous and the Lord delivers them all. So coming to church does not, uh, your problems will, are not solved because coming to church is not to solve your problems but coming to church is to know him when you know him you are then exposed you will know you many of you you don't even know your assignment right now so man of god tell me what is it that god wants me to do you don't know you will never know what you're meant to do unless you know him are you still here with me or you have just uh switched and gone to where they are saying receive this anointing oil there's yeah uh, the best thing that any man can ever do for you is to give you knowledge. Praise God. So when Christ is known, when Christ is exposed, your reality is revealed. When Christ is revealed, rather, your reality is exposed. When you see Christ, in Christ you will see you. Are you here with me? So the essence of teaching to the apostles, the prophets, uh, it is that we may equip the saints for the work of ministry. So it should not be a one-man band. It is only the man of God, the woman of God that is known. Listen, you have to equip the saints. That's why you are not seeing power in the body of Christ because you have uh, you have people like uh, you have people like um, girl that will have a, a, a gift in certain area they function in this area you have people like uh this one would function in this area but they are not all coming together why because the church has 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 come up with this concept of a one-man band just the man of god but the essence of the prophets the apostles the preachers the teachers, the shepherds, is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Glory to God. That's why you would see in the Bible, in the book of Philemon, chapter number one, verse number six. Remember this. The Bible says, let the sharing of your faith become effectual by acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So your faith becomes effectual. Your faith becomes impactful by acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So your faith becomes effectual. Your faith becomes effective by acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. 
Now, let's go back to Ephesians. Glory to God. I, I, I believe you're still here. Look at Ephesians 4, verse 13. It says, until we attain, until we attain to the unity of faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God. So the essence of preaching is that you may know him. So until we attain and know him, and know him, that's the reason of the perfecting of the saints. Now I want you to pay attention. I've said this before, I'll say it again. The unity of faith is not all Christians coming together. Oh, Jale Gabasia. Why? Because it says, until we attain the unity of faith and to the knowledge of God, to mature to manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's why you'd see Paul in his prayers. It's always, let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know, that you may know, that you may know. Reason why I'm giving this mirror to you is when you know Christ, when Christ is revealed to you, your reality is exposed. You will begin to understand that there are certain things that you are not meant to be going through, but because you're going through them because you have got no knowledge in regards to that area. Until you come to the place of knowledge of him, remember, he is our mirror. Whatever is in Christ is what is in you. I know it sounds too good to be true, but this is your reality. The Bible declares, says, he is not man that he would lie, nor son of man that would repent. Whatever he said concerning your life, it is so. So look at 1 Corinthians, glory to God. Look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Verse 16. Glory to God. The Bible says, For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have, but we have the mind, but we have the mind of Christ. I want you to understand something. That scripture there is not talking about the mind as in the brains. Okay? It's not talking about the mind as in the brains. It's talking about the word mind of Christ is the understanding of Christ. Not the brain of, but the understanding of Christ. Who has known the mind of God? But we have the mind, meaning we have the understanding. So that word, mind of Christ, is the understanding of Christ, not the brains of Christ. Why do I mean so? Look at the Bible in the book of 1 John. I'm just laying a foundation. In a few minutes, we'll be taking over. Look at the Bible in the book of 1 John. Glory to God. 1 John chapter number 5, verse 20. 1 John 5, 20. The Bible declares and it says, um, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us. What has he given us? He has given us understanding. Understanding for what? So that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true. So the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, has come and has given us understanding. Understanding to do what? That we may know him who is true. And we are in him. So remember this. You are in Christ. You might be in America. You might be in Zambia. You might be in South Africa. You might be in Canada. You might be in uh, UK. Wherever you may be. That is just your location. But that is not the real you. That is not where you really are. You are in Christ. And guess what? While you are in Christ, your life is hid. In Christ. So when you come to the knowledge of this truth and you acknowledge it, your faith becomes effectual. Your faith becomes effective. Glory to God. Are you still here with me? And uh, it says, he is the true God and eternal life. Little children, little children, keep yourselves away from idols. I know right now you're like, no, but pastor, I don't do idols. I don't worship idols. I don't worship idols. Anything that exalts itself more than Christ is an idol. I give you Christ. You don't accept Christ. But if I give you oil, you accept oil. It's an idol. The centurion said, Father, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word. 
my servant shall be made whole. But with the generation that we have, even if you pray for them right now, they just feel like something is missing. I need some oil somewhere. I need some, I don't know, something. They, they want to touch something. Why? That is the Old Testament uh, generation. They hoped for things that they did not see. They sub Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. They were hoping for the things that they did not see. But for you, we have seen it. We have what? Oh, kalabasu mahande. So, keep yourselves away from idols. Kaya badosha. So, what comes with Jesus is that we may know God. So, the only person that can reveal God or the only person that can reveal you to you is Christ. And the only person that can reveal God to us is Jesus. Look at John. I'll give you a lot of scriptures because I know it's helped for your spirit. Look at the Bible in the book of John. It is good to see the apostle, Roderick, the prophetic apostle, and the beautiful wife, prophetess Angel Preston. It is good to see you guys. It is good to see you. Glory to God. I see Evangelist Jill as well. Uh, John 17. John 17. I know somebody said, wow, how come he didn't mention me? I will spend the whole service here just mentioning your name. But just know that the fact that you are here, you are a blessing to me. I honor you. I appreciate you. Glory to God. John 17, verse number 3. Watch this. The Bible says, And this is the eternal life, that they know you. That they know you. Hey, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Verse number 4. I love verse number 4. It says, I, have, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given, I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and I have come to know in truth that I am come from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Hey. Watch this. There's a prayer that I want you to understand. I was not uh, going to look at this, but I have to look at it. Verse number nine. This is Jesus praying for you. He says, I am praying for them. Ha! The ones that have believed the message. I am praying for them. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world. Watch this. I am not praying for everybody, but I am praying for those that have believed. I am praying for the for those that have received this message but not for the world for those whom you have given me for they are yours ah jaliga badosia so for us for for we know god in christ so when 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 the accurate image of who you are so when the accurate image of you who you are in christ is revealed it is christ why because christ is our mirror so when i see christ everything that is in christ it is what is in me so christ is our mirror so when you have christ as your mirror you have the accurate image of who you are remember you are not you are not defined by your circumstances. It doesn't matter the circumstance that you're going through. You are not defined by circumstances. You are not defined by your situation. You are not defined by material things. Because many of you, you are defined by, because you don't have this, you don't have this, so that means you are not this. No, you are not defined by things. You are defined by Christ. When you see Christ, in Christ you see yourself when you see christ in christ you see yourself you can never know you until you know him so he is our mirror so when you go and look into the mirror what is it that you are seeing because when you see christ you ought to see you in christ
You are who you are by the grace of God. Grace has made you not things. You are not who you are because of your achievements. You are not who you are because of what you have acquired. You are, you are who you are by the grace of God. Why? Because it was the grace of God that made you not things. So you are a product of the grace of God. You are a product of the grace of God. Many people are confused as they define people for what they have. They define people for what they have acquired. They say this is a man of God because he has a jet. This is a man of God because he has a Bentley, he has a what? I have no problem with you having those things. But those things, they don't define you. What defines you is Christ because Christ is your mirror. So you are not defined. So listen, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter that you don't have whatever it is that they regard as if you have this, then you have made it. You are not defined by your circumstances. So if I say you are not defined by your circumstances, no matter what you are going through, that does not define you. I might be going through this. That's why the Bible says, though I go through the waters, I'm not defined by the waters. Though I go through the fire, I'm not defined by the fire. I am defined by the one that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even in the fire, I will be with you. Even in the waters, I will be with you. So who defines me? Christ defines me. Not things. I'm not defined by things. I'm defined by who he is. So that's why we have to come to the place of knowledge, of knowing him. Because when you know him, you will know you. Because your life is hid in him. When Christ is revealed, your identity is exposed because the Bible declares, says, as he is, so are we.